Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and today I'm going to give you a tour of the garden. So let's start off with the front yard garden and then I'll take you to my two rental community garden plots. Here's the front yard and there are a lot of flowers blooming finally and there's more to come. So let's check them out. First of all, I want to show you this is apricot blush senia and and look how stunning she is. I mean, this is really a beautiful flower. I was a little worried that it wouldn't be as vibrant as it is, but it really is, it's almost like a salmon color. It's really quite pretty. And then over here we have, these are seeds I saved last year from a pink zinnia. This matches the color almost perfectly to the one that I saved seeds from last year. And this is more of a sort of magenta-y pink. Uh, these are from the same seed set that I saved from the plant, but I love pink flowers and I'm excited. Now, it's not hard to get a pink zinnia, really, but I'm excited that the color stayed pretty close to true when I saved the seeds. Over here, we have poppies growing and I just picked, but I'll show you a photo of the poppy that was growing over here. Isn't it cool? I just love how the leaves look like tissue paper. Um, I think it was a Flanders poppy from a seed I got from CD Hollow, but they're doing really beautifully. And there's some over here I'm gonna show you in a minute. We have lettuce, coxcomb are growing nicely. These are dwarf coxcomb in here. This is what baby's breath looks like. And oh, there's a bee over there. Yay, Mr. Bee, enjoy the flowers. This is what baby's breath looks like when it blooms. It's really pretty. So when you get past this bud look, um, you get these beautiful little white flowers. I think I'm gonna grow baby's breath a lot more in the future. Over here is a rosemary bush that I've had this plant for, now I didn't grow this from seed originally, but I've had this plant for probably four years now. And I had it in a tiny little pot to begin with. Uh, and I upgraded it last year and then this year I upgraded it to a nice big deep one. Plenty of room for its roots to grow. And I moved it into full sun and it, I mean, at the end of the winter it was very spindly unhappy, kind of given up. I trimmed it back, if you look at one of my um, last photos you'll see I trimmed it back and look how luscious it's growing now it's doing really well here in the Sun with the right amount of nutrients to eat and of course I have my little I need to weed that you are not welcome I have to weed around my little garden shed <laughs> and my little bridge I love these little things Back here, the stevia that I grew from seed has really taken off. The orange yellow thyme, also on either side of this container, is also doing well. And then this um, multicolored sage that I got from a nursery um, has really also gone crazy. So this, this planter is filling out really nicely. And up here, we have our whippersnapper tomato plant, which is starting to set flowers. This is a micro tomato plant, and I can't wait to see what the fruit look like when it produces it. It's my first year growing a micro tomato plant, so I'm really, really looking forward to tasting them. Cone flowers are getting ready to bloom, and you can see there's some that have already opened up. And this is my third year of growing butterfly weed, and the first year it was just a tiny little plant. Second year it put out a few flowers, but this year it really has gotten stunning and showy. And I think I'm gonna transplant some of the other butterfly weed plants and other milkweed plants I grew this year into this bed and make this like a milkweed and cornflower um, bed. I have a story about these black-eyed Susans here. About three, four weeks ago, I had a really bad infestation of aphids on this plant. And I had listened to an episode of Beginner Gardener um, on uh, a podcast, and I'll link to the episode in my show notes, where she talked about if you leave the aphids, the ladybugs or other beneficial insects will plant their eggs, will lay their eggs, and then if you wait a couple more weeks, the eggs will hatch and the babies will eat all the aphids. Well, sure enough, I went on a trip and I came back and it was within a week of listening to that podcast episode, probably two to three weeks after I first started seeing the aphids and they were completely gone. I mean, do you see any aphids on this plant here? Let's see up close. Nope. Free and clear. So that's a really good lesson that 
nature will take care of aphids if you just have a little patience. Over here, the yarrow is starting to flower. And then <laughs> I had to use duct tape to save the stem. But this dahlia just bloomed, just opened up today. Look how pretty that is. I'm sorry you're kind of sideways, but you really are gorgeous. And then here are two, there's the um, Danish flag and the Flanders poppy. And I think this might be the Flanders, I can't remember which is which. Oh, chokeweed. I kill you and you come back. Don't hurt my poppy. And I just, I just took a leaf off my poppy. Of course I did. Of course I did. But <laughs> you get to see the idea. And isn't this one gorgeous? And the echinacea flowers. Check out that pretty, I love how they look right before they bloom. Are definitely getting ready to open. I Probably another week. Oh, in fact, look. Here's one that has started turning colors, the, the petals have. Probably be another week or two before it's fully it's in its glory. But uh, Echinacea is native to the area. And also, it's just really beautiful perennial. And it has medicinal benefits, so uh, I ain't complaining. These are going to be strawberry blonde sunflowers. <laughs> My potatoes are doing pretty good. These are the purple potatoes. These are a bit eaten up, but they're doing okay. Now over here, we have the Indian sea oats. Um, if you recall, the first year I planted them, there was three plants. They were short. They were no more than a foot tall. In the second year, they got about two feet tall. And this year, they're finally getting their height. They're finally getting how I envisioned them. When the breeze comes through, it blows it. It's really beautiful. And it's a nice, you know, I don't, there's nothing you can grow here very easily. That's the nice thing about perennials and natives is they can grow in mostly shaded, part shade, full sun. They can handle all kinds of conditions. And you can see the one that gets the most sun out of the three has the most height <laughs> for sure. The raspberry bushes are at their peak right now. I've been harvesting bowl after bowl of raspberries and uh, let's harvest them now. Some of them are definitely past their prime, but there's still plenty to harvest. Yeah, this one's a good one. Oh, shoot. That one's right on the edge of its prime. Yay. Okay, here's the bowl of raspberries I just picked. Isn't that a glorious sight? In our most prominent of native plant beds, we have flowers, we have the anemones blooming. And then we have our first of the asters. Yay! That's so exciting. Blooming here, they're just starting to emerge. I think these are New England asters. The mountain mint is also starting to form flowers. Come on. Hey, now let's go to my first community garden plot. You'll notice I have a makeshift fence up. This is because my neighbor's children for a time, my plot neighbors children for a time were coming into my garden plot and even sprayed some stuff on my plants that I thought was poison it turns out it was vinegar solution but still they were coming in and <laughs> switching up tags spraying stuff on my plants messing with my garden so I just put a little fence up he got the message and now he's actually watching his children so everything's fine anyway um oh and he was also using my water so this helps reduce that <laughs> Anyway, here's my plot. I did a bit of weeding yesterday in this row and through it. And let's, let's take a look and see what we have. So here in this row, I'm going to plant some more beans. But these are Calypso beans. Of course, I planted a marigold. These are beautiful black and white beans. They're starting to form flowers. And then look at this. The Moline flower, the Moline plant is setting flowers. Oh. It looks very desert-like. It's not native to this area, so it probably is a desert plant. Oh, I think it looks so cool, though. The tomato plant's doing well, and surprisingly, even though it's been attacked by cucumber beetles, my cucumber plant has thus far survived. This is the longest uh, cucumber plant of mine has survived without dying. And it's starting to set fruit. Let's see. I don't know if it got... We'll find out if the bud falls off the next couple days, but setting fruit so we'll see if it got pollinated and if I'll get some cucumbers which would be just really really awesome 
These are the Roma tomatoes, so I'm not going to prune them much. I pruned the bottom leaves a little bit, but they're a determinate tomato, so I'm going to kind of leave them alone. I need to plant something vining here. I think I'll do my purple long, Asian long beans. And then here's kind of what's left of my romaine lettuce. I'd pulled up the other lettuces here. Uh, actually, these leaves haven't gotten super bitter, so I think I could harvest them and uh, still eat them if I wanted to, uh, which is surprising to me, this Jericho romaine lettuce. All right, next row. <laughs> I always have a pile of something somewhere. <laughs> this marigold plant keeps getting knocked over by the hose when I water the plants. So I kind of propped it up with some sticks to help it grow upright. Maybe, maybe set its roots a little better here. I've put down, I want to put mulch down, but I've put down cardboard to help block weeds. Um, for the time being, you can see they've gotten through kind of in that sort of my makeshift cardboard. I need to actually spread that out. That was some poles that, uh, a box for some poles that I bought. But here's the tomatoes are, what is this one? I think this is the Medusa that I got as an exchange with another gardener is setting flowers. They're all pretty much setting flowers now or starting to see this one is the, my Perone tomato. She's setting flowers too. And here we have, and does anybody know what this is? I've never grown Swiss chard before and I'm seeing this on the leaves. Is this from water? Is this from sun scald? Is this a bug? Is it a fungus? Tell me if you know, I can Google it too, but I figure someone here might know. Um, what's going on with it? Is it still edible when it looks like that? Let me know what you think or what you know. This is my giant golden amaranth. And here's an interesting thing. I think this might, might be one of the reasons the cucumbers are doing as okay as they are. It's because this is serving as sort of a trap or attractant plant. Look how many cucumber beetles are on this amaranth. It's a lot. Each plant has a lot of them. And so the term of a trans, so a trap plant, which I think really should be a deterrent plant or a detra distraction plant would be a better term. A trap plant is basically something that will draw the attention of predators either before they get to the plant that you want to protect or will draw it away from the plant you want to protect. And amaranth is known to draw cucumber beetles and squash bugs pretty strongly. But in the meantime, the plants seem to be doing good. I don't care that the leaves have some holes in them. You can eat the leaves, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm actually here for the seeds. And they're setting seeds just fine. And they're just really pretty. I mean, isn't that pretty to have this tall? These things are gonna be giant. I think they're gonna be taller than me. <laughs> so, uh, I probably should have put them towards the back of the garden so they wouldn't shade other plants, but I think it'll be okay. My pepper plants are growing nicely and I need to weed here, but they're doing pretty well overall. Now, this tomato is struggling. And I planted it in one of the rows that I planted tomatoes last year. Now, I have to tell you, purposefully this year, I planted tomatoes. This was a pepper row last year. And over there, that other tomato row. This was, this was, this was beans and uh, flowers. This was peppers. And that row back there was amaranth. So I purposefully planted almost all of my tomatoes in rows that had not had disease last year. But I had this extra space and I wanted to plant a tomato here just to see if it would end up being as diseased as the others. And look at this, this plant out of all of them is struggling the most. It's not looking like it wants to stay upright. I'm gonna wash my hands with rubbing alcohol after this. It's kind of curling up a lot. I don't know if this is a disease, this is natural, this plant or not, but look, well, that's a snapped off root, snapped off thing. But I think this plant, this is a Ukrainian purple tomato, which is a shame if it doesn't do well. But I think it's going to struggle more than the others. So this is why I rotated out. And look how healthy these guys look in comparison. How healthy and full and lush. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Here's milkweed from last year and milkweed from this year that I planted. Dill. The tiny peppers you saw me transplant and the oregano you saw me transplant last week. Look, they're already setting new leaves. They're already growing pretty well. Now, so a lot of people freak out when they see these, when they see these holes on their eggplant. These are sand fleas, I believe they're called, cause this. 
I'm here to tell you that while it is unsightly, doesn't look good, I have never had it stop a plant from actually producing fruit. So it doesn't bother me. Um, for aesthetic purposes, nah, it's not great. And by the way, <laughs> this is my jerry-rigged. I had this metal wiring left over from last year from the tomato plants. I had these poles I'd, bought, I'd gotten from somebody for a trade, but they're not very, they're not very sturdy, right? But as three of them, or four of them, tied together with this, they have a little bit of strength. And really for eggplant, they just need something to lean on. They don't need something heavy like a tomato plant. So I think this will work well to just tie them up against these poles once they start getting taller. Remember I mentioned last time the um, mosquito dunk? That's what it looks like when you first put it in. But yeah, it'll take about a month to break down. And these tomatoes are also doing well. I've kind of let some of the red garnet amaranth from last year stay alive just to see how it does. This is where they grew last year and they've reseeded like crazy. And if you look here, you can see where I stopped weeding. <laughs> I got about three fourths of this done yesterday. Here's the garlic, some more tomatoes. They're also doing well. This one's crazy. This is my this is my rebel. Yeah, this is my rebel starfighter prime tomato, and it is by far the biggest. I think that they're gonna be cherry tomatoes because I see a couple fruit being set here. That looks to me like it's gonna be a smaller small tomato but we have fruit set which is really awesome here's the kale without the cover and you know what i think well it's doing really well it's definitely reaching the top of this bar so i'm probably going to have to uncover it so that it can continue growing and yes it'll have butterfly cabbage lopers on it after a while but it looks like some might have already gotten in so yeah it's not going to you know, it's not a fail-safe perfect thing, but it's done well. I mean, look how beautiful they are. All right, let's harvest some. So when you're harvesting any kind of plant that's a leafy green, you start with the outside leaves. You want to leave the babies on the inside because those are future big leaves. I can do this with two hands. And I just kind of pop it to the side. Let's see if I can show you. Kind of pop it like that. It just comes right off. And these stems, you can remove the leaves from these stems, but you don't have to. They do pretty, they're, they're not as tough as other kale stems. All right, there's the kale. That's a nice portion right there. Oh yeah, plus a garlic scape. Woohoo! I also have some flowers, including this love and a mist flowers blooming in the garden, and these velvet dawn corn flowers, or um, bachelor's buttons, they're also called. And I just think they're so pretty. I love this dark, hue to them all right here's the second community garden plot let's start off with let's start off with some sugar snap peas i just harvested them two days ago and look there's so many on this plant it's crazy i'm doing really well i've started trellising up the different plants adding stakes to them and stuff i haven't gotten to adding stakes to these peppers these are the most recently planted uh, peppers these peppers which i planted about three weeks ago i think are doing amazing we have shishito thunder mountain pepper sweet long peaks sharpe and banana pepper and craig's giant jalapeno peppers they're actually starting to get to the height where i need to start tying them to the stakes for some support but for now they're doing great my bronze fennel which i started using no transplant winter sowing is looking really cool i'm growing it for decorations for flower arrangements but i just i might try tasting it too we'll see yesterday i cleared and amended this space and i planted some california wonder bell peppers that i grew using winter sowing there's the container <laughs> My beets are coming along. Let's see, are we starting to see any form? Oh, there's some. Let's see some forming here. I didn't thin them out, so we'll see how they do. I have two different types of beets. I have yellow, actually I have three. I have yellow, I have some white ones, and then uh, your standard red. And I can tell, you know, this is one of the few beds that I didn't really amend. I didn't add new compost to, and I think it's probably gonna affect the size of the 
um, beets. But that's okay because I love beets, but it won't be the end of the world if I don't get a huge stock. The winter squash melons that I planted between the radishes um, while I was harvesting the radishes, I need to finish harvesting the radishes or pulling them up, not harvesting. They're past ripe now. Are doing well. And over here, this is the strawberry watermelon, the moon and stars melon. Oh, I just think the leaves look so cool. And then we have some squash. And look, we have fruit being grown that's been pollinated. some patty pan squash and I think we have our first zucchini oh it's grown in size just in a day I know you gotta watch them they grow fast this is um, the black peony poppies um, marigolds these all I grew, just about everything I in here I grew using the winter sowing process and some marigolds that I planted last week and look they're already starting to set flowers I need to stake up these tomatoes but they're doing well overall they were very small when i transplanted them they're definitely and let's see this the experiment here was to set these down and see if it preserves the moisture yeah it's definitely more moist under it but i think i probably need a thicker layer let's see well we'll see if it helps reduce evaporation and my lettuces have fully gone to seed Look over here. And my chamomile is producing flowers. So to harvest chamomile, you can just take your finger like this and then you take off the stem because that's bitter. All right. Got the green, the sugar snap peas in my basket and uh, say good. By the garden for today. I've got a ton of other chores to do, but uh, love it. Well, the sky is getting dark. It's threatening to rain, which is fantastic because we've had so little rain this year. And while that's meant generally less mosquitoes, I have to water my plants more. So, and the water in the creek is getting a little lower. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to end this video here, get indoors and stay dry, and I'll see you next time.